<laughs> she's empty. Arthur Morgan here, actually Hickok 45. We noticed, have noticed, that many of you are playing the new game Red Dead Redemption 2. We notice in comments uh, on certain videos, especially firearms like this or the Schofield or the Colts, that, uh, that many of you are playing that game. It's very obvious. And some of you are new to the channel and a lot of you are not. You know, everybody plays games these days. Well, not everybody, but uh, people of all ages play the games. And that is supposed to be one of the best ones out in a long time. And I'm actually kind of excited about it. Even though I don't play uh, video games, I have played a little bit with John, just enough to get a taste for them and, and to know that the firearms uh, that are represented in these games, whether it's a World War II game or a Western game, that sort of thing, it's, it's I mean, they're, it's fascinating to see how realistic it is. I didn't realize that. Uh, I used to be one of those old fogies, I guess, uh, to some extent. Uh, up until about 20 years ago, whenever I saw one of those uh, games with a, a Garand in it, John and a buddy of his were playing a little bit, and uh, but wow, that thing looks like the real thing. So anyway, we know a lot of you are playing that game, and, uh, and it's developing an interest, uh, I think, in these old guns of the West, which is great, I think, because if you've been around here long, you know, these are probably my favorite firearms. You know, the, the old Colt single actions, the clones of, of the Colt, the lever guns, whoever makes them, the lever guns, the old double barrel shotguns, and all those things. We have, I don't know, we probably have 200 videos we've done over the last 10 years on these firearms because I own a lot of them and uh, we, we just love them. So we thought, uh, in a way, we would we would do this. Well, many of you have recommended when you're going to do a Red Dead Redemption 2 video. When you're going, to, I, mean, I see that all the time. And to tell you the truth, before you even started uh, asking about it, we had talked about it, but we didn't want to, you know look like we're pandering to 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 people or the games or trying to get views or some silly like that, you know. Uh, but the more and more we see the comments and uh, the more people who have asked us to do it, I thought, why not? Why not? These are my favorite guns and some of John's favorite firearms. So what we thought we'd do is bring out some of the firearms that, that are in the game. And I happen to have <laughs> most of them. Huh, imagine that. And uh, with John as my advisor, because he plays you know, the game some, he has it. I played it a little bit at his place. And it is pretty amazing, I have to say. I'd like to get back over there and play a little more and get a better feel for it. I'm not a big game player, okay? And probably won't become one. But I tell you, I, I can see if any game ever drew me in, it would be that one because it's it's pretty cool. I watch westerns all the time, and I you know I shot these firearms a lot, and, and they're just some of my favorites. So anyway, what I thought we'd do, uh, John's going to give you a little more information about some of these firearms and and how they uh, relate to to the game and if they're realistic or not in the game and if there's any differences and that sort of thing. Uh, so I can't really do that, but I know the firearms that that are in there. And, uh, and we're going that's a Winchester, a new Winchester. So we're going to do a separate video on that. We've not done a Winchester 1866. And uh, appreciate their help. And we're going to shoot some federal ammo. Appreciate that. And if you're not an NRA member, as I've been since my 20s, uh, uh, check the link out in the descriptions and, and become an NRA member. Most of all, I want to welcome uh, new people. I mean, we get over 2,000 new subscribers every day, and so there's a lot of people that come in and see something, and they don't understand us yet, but you will if you watch some videos. And uh, we forgive you know, a lot of troll comments from brand new people. It takes a while to get to know people and how they operate. Uh, and I'm a little goofy at times, and I, I, uh, I test people's gullibility at times. I realize that. But I think that, uh, but anyway, I want to welcome you. If uh, you have not even seen many firearms videos on YouTube at all, but you've been playing the Red Dead Redemption 2, and it is, uh, I don't know, it has caused you to develop more of an interest in these sorts of firearms. Uh, well, let me start with this. Uh, that's a good thing because as much as you, hopefully you enjoy shooting these firearms in the game and they are very realistic, uh, you would enjoy them in real life. Believe me, I do and always have. So uh, that's good news. There's no big surprise. You might be playing that game, so there's no, no, no negative surprise. Wow, they're cool in the game, but I wonder how they are in, in real life. Probably wouldn't want to fire them. They probably kick too much, or they're not as cool, they're not reliable, or whatever you, know, you might imagine. No, they're reliable generally, and they are a lot of fun. 
So, so I want to enjoy just introducing some of you to them. And I know everybody's not you know new, of course. Uh, a lot of you have fired lots of different firearms, but maybe you've not fired some of these, okay? And maybe you hate video games, you know? Uh, and that's another thing I want to point out. Uh, uh, there are too many people, and I maybe I've been an old FUD in my life about some things, but uh, there are too many people who leave comments on videos uh, making fun of the game comments, people who mention Red Dead Redemption or some other game. And I kind of understand it because until I saw that video game with John with the Garand and everything, and wow, this is cool. I see why it's interesting to you. Uh, I was a little like that. You know, I've never been a big game player. Uh, so I guess there's a level of ignorance. And I don't mean that in a negative way. We're all ignorant in certain ways. If you're 40 years old or you're 60 years old or you're 80 years old, maybe you're just a little ignorant about video games and how cool they really are. Okay. Now, again, I don't enjoy sitting and playing them a long time or anything, but you may not be aware of how realistic they are in these firearms, how, how they, they duplicate these real firearms and how they're bringing people into the firearms uh, uh, world and, and helping to make more shooting enthusiasts, which guess what that's good for? The Second Amendment. If you're for the Second Amendment, uh, maybe you should lighten up on uh, those folks that leave a comment about how they saw this gun in a video game or something, all right? People are, that play video games are not just 15 or 12 or 9. They're 20 and 30 and 40 and my age, okay? So that's my little soapbox on that. So let's lighten up on the people that play video games. Uh, I mean, however people come to the firearms uh, world, hey, more power to it. I guarantee you some of the people who have uh, insulted Oh, someone who plays video games online, they're the very same people who bought them a 44 Magnum because they saw Dirty Harry. Or they bought them a Hawking Rifle because they saw Jeremiah Johnson. You know? So we all <laughs> fall prey to that, okay? This is the 66. Why don't we just start with it? It's a Winchester 66. It is in the, the video game. It's a lever gun. Uh, I'm not going to go into great depth on any of these. You know, this was kind of the second uh, in the big chain. You had the Volcanic, but uh, you had the Henry and then this. This is basically an improved Henry rifle. Maybe I should have started with the Henry. But they put a uh, forearm on it and a loading gate. And, you know, it's a Winchester 1866. You know, the Henry came out in about 1860. And let me grab it real quick. The Henry came out in 1860, and uh, well, it, that's the patent. I think it didn't really show up until a couple years later. So that was really uh, kind of a growth, uh, outgrowth of the Volcanic, you know, in a full-length rifle version, and uh, pretty interesting. Fired a 44 Henry round. It was a rim fire, and while we just load it, I've got some 44-40, and I'll show you how it loads. That's all I want to do with these. Basically, give you a real brief uh, history of it. And, and then just show how it loads and then fire it a little bit, okay? So the Henry was open at the bottom, as you see there. And we have videos on, on this. You can look further, of course. A lot of you already found it because I've seen a lot of comments on the, the Henry video. So you had to slide them in there like an old 22 or a new 22 with a tubular magazine. Is open in the bottom. That was one of the limitations of it. It would get dirt in there. That's why they wanted to fix that for the 1866 model. Plus the barrel get hot because this was black powder and uh, you know it was hard to hold on to when it was hot. So then you close that up and you got that spring there. See that's your magazine and there's no forearm. Now, I always thought they were really cool looking. That's one reason you see them in a lot of the movies or video games. They're just really cool and uh, it's a lever gun. Benjamin Tyler Henry was very instrumental in this. And, of course, the New Haven Arms was, was run or owned by uh, Oliver Winchester at the time. So it was kind of a Winchester. But let's just take a couple shots with it, okay? And you'll notice this tab will come down further down the magazine as we shoot it. Let's just shoot a two-liter or something here. Yeah. A pot. <laughs> Good for smoking pot. <laughs> Cowboy appropriate and it hold I don't know 14 15 rounds or something like that fired a rim fire it was a rim fire so you'll see one of these at a gun show I was at a Civil War show this morning believe it or not and uh, and I saw some they're like 40 50 thousand dollars original Henry's 
you know, but they fired a rim fire. You can't get ammo for them anymore, all right? And uh, this fires uh, 4440, it's chambered for a cartridge you can actually find. Some are chambered in 45, Colt, and different things, but this is a reproduction, okay? Henry rifle, cool, used in the Civil War, in fact. Uh, not in great numbers, but it was. So you'll see that probably. And then the, uh, the improvement of that a few years later in 66 was the Model 66 of all things. And you see you got the forearm on it, so it doesn't burn your hand up and you got a loading gate. So we can put a couple of rounds in it. Now that's our 4440, I don't wanna mix those up. This is chambered in 45 Colt. Uh, this was chambered in 44 as well, and it was a rim fire. Okay, so that's the problem with these two guns. If you had an original one, you couldn't even shoot it. You know, nobody really loads ammo for that. You know, rim fire, 44. Yeah, try to find that. Okay, you might find a couple as antiques, uh, and they're like 40 or 50 bucks to buy one. Okay, I've already fired this, but I'll fire it again. So you got your loading gate, but you got the same toggle link action. So it's essentially the same rifle with a forearm and a loading gate, and maybe just minor tweaks. Okay. This is a cool rifle. It really feels good. Bowling pin. <laughs> I left Mayers off and I was the first to know it. But now it's not like excruciatingly loud. Let's shoot this target. <laughs> the Red Dead Redemption target. All right. Now, again, it may not sound like me doing a video like this john and me but uh I, I i just tickled to death that there's something going on out there in the media world entertainment world that is drawing new people to these firearms because uh, i've been promoting them for a long time and that game is going to promote them a lot more than i ever could so it's just it's just great they're fun there's replicas of all of them virtually yeah so anyway that's 1866 and uh, guess when it came out? Yeah, 66. The next one was 73, which I, I don't think is in the, in the game, but I've got one of those too. All right, it was the first one I actually fired a uh, centerfire cartridge. And by the way, it was chambered for the 4440, this exact round. These are chambered for these rounds, but it's, uh, you know, it's just so we can shoot them, okay? They would be worthless if you, you know, they were chambered in 44 rim fire, as I said. But when you got to the 1873, that was a big year. That's when we went to the centerfire cartridge and 4440, the 1873 rifle. And it's much like uh, like this one, same kind of the same action. It's got a side plate. If you see something with a side plate there, it's probably a 73 or a 76, okay? All right, so, hey, I know what you want to see too. The Schofield, let's look at it, okay? Because now I did get far enough, I think, uh, when I was playing it at John's, the guy, Arthur, was carrying a Schofield. And uh, they're, they're kind of an interesting firearm. And if you're not familiar at all with these Western firearms, I'll pull out my, uh, my 45 here, my Colt. They're both unloaded, but they are far different. These are a couple of very popular uh, handguns of the time. And of course the Schofield breaks open. That's what is so dramatically different from the, the Colt and some of the others like it, okay? So with the Schofield, you just pull that back, you, cock it there a little bit and you're ready to load see now it was chambered also for a shorter cartridge the 45 well the smith and wesson model 3 is really what it is the schofield was a variation of it but it was chambered in 44 and in 45 and but not the 45 colt which we're shooting in it but most of them that you find today replicas like this are chambered in 45 colt again why because there's a lot of ammo for it okay all right, now it, there, are, there are some 45 Schofield rounds that you can buy, and they're just a little shorter, 45 Colts, what it amounts to. All right, let's fire this thing and then empty it. Again, I just want to kind of load all these and empty them for you. Wow, that one really came at us. Let's smoke that big pot. Now let's save the rest of it for a shotgun, maybe. Hit a stop sign. <laughs> yeah. The Schofield, and then when you're ready to empty it, uh, you just pull back on that lever, and there they go. They come out easily. I'll just capture those since I save those, reload them. Okay, so that's a little different. You pull out this screw right here, unscrew it, lift this up, and the cylinder comes off. It's pretty easy to clean, but it's a breakdown model on that big hinge. Pretty interesting. That, 
these these types of revolvers i think came out first in about 1870 i believe you know with actual cartridges the rimfire cartridges and then in 75 they changed the latch colonel or major schofield whoever he came up with a different latching system for the cavalry so that one hand they could just pull it back and open it up okay and so but essentially the same thing with smith and wesson model three this is the schofield version and uh just an interesting firearm kind of fascinating okay the colt you see the difference in how they load you go to half cock on the old actions and i'll do that again one two second cock to load it and you load one skip one so you just have five in there have an empty chamber under the uh, hammer for safety we have videos on that too and you cock it it's going to come on an empty chamber okay so with this one you just hit the cowboy again <laughs> i missed him Nice old gun. You see the difference in unloading though and reloading. See, I can't <laughs> break it open. And again, this is the, got to go to half cock. Let's see, make sure it's half cock. There we go. Uh, so this one's a little slower to unload and load, but not too bad. Had a reputation for being real solid and simple. See, so now it's empty. Now some of the newer versions of these, these Colt uh, look-alikes or clones, they, uh, they operate a little bit differently. And they've got a safety device and you can open that up and turn the cylinder like the Ruger. So there's differences. You need to study up on that and which one you'd be interested in if you're old enough to, to buy one of these and that sort of thing. So that's the Colt. You see the vast difference and all these work the same way. I brought out three just to show you again the different barrel lengths. The Colt, you know, was, was so popular in the West and in 45, uh, the most popular caliber in it, even though 4440 was pretty popular, which the 73 was chambered in, as I said earlier. And then people could carry the Colt in 4440. It was actually 44, it was called at the time, Winchester Centerfire. And uh, they could carry their handgun in the same chambering. Uh, but the Colt was chambered, or it was uh, made in three different barrel lengths. You got a five and a half, this one's four and three quarters, and that one's seven and a half. So if you see a Colt single action and in a clone of it, it's going to be one of these barrel lengths, okay? And I like all lengths, as I've said before. They're all cool, okay? So that's the Colt single action. Very common in the West, in the Westerns, and everything else. Oh, let's move on down here a little bit. Now, this is a Remington rolling block, and uh, I have not seen that in the, in the game. John tells me it is in there. This is a pretty cool and a simple design. We'll fire it here. You just uh, you cock the hammer, pull back the block there, breech block, put the round in. I bet we've got one here somewhere. Yeah. 4570. Slip it in there, close that up, and it's ready to go. Now what happens, you think, well, how's that going to hold it? Well, as soon as that hammer falls at all, it locks up that block there. Okay? So it won't, I'll, I'll let the hammer right there. See, I can't move that. It's, it's really a solid gun. So this is 4570. In fact, I just traded for this today at the Civil War show. You're the first to see it. Okay, hope it don't get too dark to see here. I'll see if I can pull it on the gong. <laughs> we did. So then the way you open it up is you cock the hammer back and that releases that. And there you go. Pot another one in, close it up, and you're ready to go. Pretty cool, huh? And the other single shot rifle that I think is in the game is the old Springfield trapdoor. Now, a lot of these were converted from the old muzzle loaders, but now this one was not. In 1873, that's what we went to. The military did, the Springfield trapdoor single shot. And it was a 4570. Let me grab that other round here. And here's how you load it. Put that thing in there, close him up. And you just shoot. <laughs> and then the cool part is how it unloads. Watch this. You cock it back. Woo! Pops it out of there. That's the Springfield trap door. That's pretty neat, huh? Looks like we're going to get rained on. So we might cover up here and come back and talk to you in a minute. How's that? Hickok like 45 back. We had a rainstorm for about 20, 30 minutes. And I changed my hat. 
I'm not gonna change my shirt. Hey, a little water won't kill you. Uh, so we were about to grab a shotgun, I think. I just fired the 4570 single shots. You know, the uh, I was telling you about the uh, trap door and showing you how it worked. And uh, you know, 1873, the 4570 round, that big old round, that's when that came about. The military used that up into uh, about 1892. And then they went to the crag, which we'll show you in a second. Well, let's just show you now. The crag was, uh, I think, the first smokeless round, you know, instead of just these black powder cartridges. And uh, the crag, Jorgensen, is uh, an interesting uh, firearm. It loads in a very interesting way. I'll bring it over here. We still got some wet ammo. I'll tell you what, we never let rain stop what we're doing. Uh, these all clean up and they dry off just, just fine. You do want to take care of your firearms. You get them wet, you want to dry them off, which we did dry them pretty well and uh, we'll oil them up and they'll be fine. Uh, yeah, this was uh, this was 1899 model, mine is. And so as I understand the game, I think is set in 1899. So this is, I guess, the most modern firearm, you know, in the game, the, the Krag. And this is the Krag carbine, uh, which is mine. And I've just always been kind of fascinated with the Krag. It's just an interesting uh, rifle. And it loaded in a different sort of way. It was very different from <laughs> most others. You, you put your shells in here, and I haven't fired this thing a long time. It's me hanging it up here. I always put three in. Holds five, and you put one in, and you're ready to go. Let's shoot it. Very interesting firearm, uh, no doubt about it. It's got your safety there, you know, locks it up, kind of like a uh, Mauser. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's see, we can hit the gong with these. <laughs> Since it's AR-500. And what do we have here? There's a two liter. <laughs> All the pots are wet, so they won't smoke very well now. But that's the Krag carbine, and it uh, it doesn't kick too much. It's a 30 caliber. Uh, I mean, you know, you're shooting something. 45 70s. That's another thing I wanted to address. They kick a little bit, but don't let people scare you too much. Uh, they they push you. They don't hurt you. Okay, that's kind of the thing about recoil. Now these, this 1866, the Henry, they don't kick at all. They're heavy guns and they shoot a light cartridge, a pistol cartridge basically. And uh, the 30 caliber has a little bit of punch, but not much. Uh, the 4570 punches you a little bit. And then the 12 gauge, now in the game I understand you got a double barrel, you got a Model 97. Let's, uh, let's shoot the double barrel first, okay? And with hammers, these are all fun. These are fun guns. We have lots of videos on these. We, we bring these out every now and then. And uh, they're pretty cool. Very simple to, to see how they operate. And you know, you just have the lever opens it up and you want to fire it. It's got two triggers like the old ones. That uh, right barrel is usually the front trigger. Left barrel is the rear trigger. Let's just cock them both and shoot them both. I'll shoot that pot anyway. <laughs> uh, well, that target uh, do, didn't do so well in the storm there, did it? Let's shoot it again in the middle. <laughs> we might as well mess it up a little more. So nothing like a good old stagecoach gun. Yep, these are, these are so cool. They just really are. Uh, I've got a few of those, as you have seen probably. Like I said, uh, you know, I just happen to have all these firearms and uh, I've never played a video game a day in my life, hardly, other than uh, here and there. Now this is the 1897, the pump, and guess when it came out? Yeah, 1897. And very popular, it was used as a military shotgun, hunting shotgun, you, you name it. Very, very, very popular. You notice it, it's a little different from most, the bolt comes out the back. The Model 12 kind of corrected that and kept it all in the receiver. But uh, it's a little quirky. I find them a little quirky. Uh, so yeah, they're very interesting and they're very historical, but I would not want to rely on one. I just uh, find them kind of quirky myself, okay? I'm gonna shoot it a couple times though, see if I can do that. That's what I wanted to do, show you how these load and, uh, and fire them. Let's put the shell in the right way. It's a pump, it holds, uh, oh, I don't know how, much, how many does this thing hold? Holds about, five or, or six okay do I not have the bolt closed I'll tell you like I said they're kind of quirky I'm gonna put one in the chamber then I'm gonna put one up in here there we go 
All right, and cowboy action shooting, these are really popular, and you have to load them just like I did. You can only have two rounds in them. So that, you know, the double barrel and these, they, they compete kind of on an even keel. Uh, level playing field to some extent. Oh, uh, let's hit that other pot. <laughs> it disappeared. Mr. Cowboy. Yeah, got to shoot the cowboy. Ah, see, that just hit my thumb when I cocked that. The bolt did. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a little quirky, but a really neat firearm. Uh, quite a piece of history. 1897. Okay. So they both kicked their 12 gauge. Depends on what kind of ammo. One advantage is with uh, these, you can shoot any sort of uh, 12 gauge ammo, really light if you want to, or a little warmer. Of course, these are old. You don't want to shoot anything too hot. Okay. And uh, as I said, the Krag, I guess, is the latest uh, firearm in, the, in Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, 1899 this would be an older one I, John tells me there's something like this in there but this is not a cartridge uh, firearm this is the how to pistol which you may have seen we have a video or two with that it's a percussion but it, it, it looks like uh, something that's in there I think so interesting firearm really cool and I think I've, I've shot everything I've shown you the differences I'm not gonna go back through them the, the breakdown on the Schofield is is rather unique yeah, you know, when you compare it with the, the Colt and a lot of other handguns. Um, and, you know, the lever guns, uh, the 1866 and the Henry, great old guns go back into the 1860s, of course. And then your single shots, uh, very, very popular. The, this gun, in fact, this very gun, this was made, this specific gun in the 18, around 18, it's hard to get the exact dates on these, but based on the range and, and the serial number, it's around 1880, somewhere between 1879 and 1882 or three, right in there. Uh, so this may have actually been used to hunt buffalo, this, uh, this Remington rolling block, 4570, okay? This actual firearm, it's not a reproduction there, okay? So uh, those, are, those are just kind of a quick look at them and uh, uh, again, welcome you guys that uh, gals you know from the game if, if that's where you're coming from or not okay and we'll uh, have a little more to say about that maybe now right now I want to let John kind of give you some specifics on a couple of these firearms because he actually plays the game I played a little bit with him but just briefly probably will some more in the future because it is kind of interesting but uh, we'll let John uh, fill you in on a couple things right now Hey, John Hickok here. Really quickly, I want to give you guys kind of a little bit more overview in depth of that as it relates to the actual game itself. I'm going to be really quick. I'm not going to mention every detail, everything that's wrong with, with every gun in the game. Maybe I'll do that in some other videos uh, because I'm still playing the game. I haven't even played through the whole story yet and uh, having unlocked all of the weapons and, uh, and we'll do that some other times. I want to give you a quick, quick overview, but it, it's a great game. I'm really excited about it. The first Red Dead Redemption um, you know, brought a lot of new people to Westerns, which is a really exciting thing. And then this game is even more successful and more popular uh, than that one was. It's the second largest entertainment release of all time. First largest being Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, so that's a big deal. And you know, Westerns have not been this mainstream since the days of Gunsmoke um, and then back in the old uh, Western TV days. So it's a big deal. It's a really big deal and we're excited about it. Okay, so the 1866 in the game is referred to as the Lancaster Rifle. Now they made up some of these uh, names, so I wanted to kind of point that out. This is the Lancaster Rifle, as they call it. It is, in fact, in 1866, um, which had this brass receiver like, like the Henry, at least. I mean, it's brass looking. It was kind of a slightly different uh, composite than exactly brass, but basically brass receiver. Um, the what's kind of a Henry rifle in the game. I've noticed that they've got kind of a big lever loop on it. I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate, historical was um so that, that was something that kind of jumped out at me is a little weird but it's called like the litchfield rifle something like that so they changed the name of those two uh for some reason i don't know what those where those names come from it's something that i'm aware of historically uh, and then the colt single action um, as, you, as dad pointer showed you here is referred to as the cattleman what's interesting about that is uberti who's an, uh, an italian uh, reproduction they make uh it's an italian company that makes uh western gun reproductions Theirs is called the Cattleman, so I'm thinking maybe it came from that. Uh, but they refer to it as the Cattleman in the game. And one thing that jumps out at me about the Colt in the game 
of the cattleman is that the cylinder and the recoil shield, shield you know it seems there's something off about it it just seems too big right like this area right here in relationship to the grip it, it just seems too big i think they got the proportions a bit off on that it almost looks like you know instead of being chambered in 45 it's chambered in like some kind of you know 50 caliber you know some kind of huge some bigger caliber or something like that so that looks a little bit off um, i want to point out something about the double barrel now a lot of these uh have kind of a name that sort of fits they didn't give it like any so, sort of weird name like uh, like i think they just call this a pump action shotgun and this is a double barrel you know something like that they call this the springfield rifle and um and this i think is just called the bolt action you know so they were pretty generic on some of these but then some of them they decided for some reason to give them an actual uh different name so the double barrel a couple of things jumped out at me uh first of all i noticed that they have a tang safety on it which this right here is, is the tang and a tang safety basically is just like a little toggle where you can put it on safe essentially so it won't fire and it's possible that a gun like this could have had something like that pre-1899 but very unlikely and i've never seen one so i'm guessing maybe they just saw a modern double barrel shotgun and saw one on it and added it because um, that that seems a little bit off to me and then also here the lever for the to open the uh to, to break it down um it sticks out kind of like raised you know from the tang when normally they would be like right up against it and that 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 doesn't seem right i've, I've never seen one like that before it seems like that would break off or, or something like that so little details i think they kind of maybe screwed up on that one but overwhelmingly i've been very impressed by how accurate these things are i mean even on the the reloading action if you go into first person mode on the game and you look at it closely you can even see the elevator coming up um, it, you know, you have to do another action to actually lever it. You know, you pull the trigger to fire in the game on the controller, and then you push it again. He goes out, and you release it, and it comes back. I mean, it's it's pretty, it's very very spot on. Now you might notice this gun just appeared magically on the table. Um, you know, we actually forgot we didn't get it on the list. You know, I talked about it before, but we we forgot to get it on the list right before we did this. And so we ran inside and grabbed it. I thought of it while, while I was filming. Uh, but this is the Browning A5, uh, great shotgun. It's a little bit of a stretch, I think, to put this in, the, in that game, considering the setting is 1899. Uh, not impossible if you look up some history on it, but a little bit of a, a bit of a stretch. Um, but it, it is in there. In fact, I haven't unlocked it yet, so I can't really tell you how much how it operates in the game and I remember if dad mentioned this earlier this is a how to pistol it's a percussion but you'll notice there is a uh, a regular shotgun cartridge version of this something like this in the game it looks very very similar um so yeah that's just kind of a quick i want to give you a quick overview and uh it's we're kind of it's a neat game i've been really enjoying playing it and i'm excited about uh, more people being introduced into Western Western guns and then just the culture around these. It's the first time that what I would consider guns got good, you know, <laughs> and uh, part of the generalization, it's just, it's a really, really neat time in uh, American history, interesting time, fascinating time in, in weapons history and the, and the evolution of weapons. It's very, very interesting time. Lots of cool guns from that era, but I'm going to hand it back to dad and I uh, appreciate you guys, you know, for, for hanging with us and uh, checking this video out. And I'll see you guys around later. Thanks, John. Uh, John has more information about the actual game, obviously, than I do. So uh, just a couple of last points. Um, some of these firearms are, are, are new reproductions. Some are not. I'll point those out. And also, Spencer was the rifle I couldn't think of the name of earlier. It's a Spencer rifle, which uh, we, you know, we've done a video or two on that. Uh, yeah, it's a neat rifle, but it's kind of awkward to use, so it's not a rifle I'm driven to have even a reproduction of it, believe it or not. So, And that's kind of the thing we're wanting to show you, how they operate, and uh, you can tell by the firearms I own, the ones that I own are probably the ones I kind of like, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, just, again, this is a reproduction, how to pistol. This is a reproduction uh, firearm, the uh, Schofield. 
if you have an original, you need to be firing you know, black powder cartridges in it, okay? Because it goes back into the 1875 and everything. These are, well, Colt's kind of hard to say. <laughs> Colt's been made since 1873. So, yeah, whatever you want to call an original, they're all Colt single actions. And again, the 66 is a reproduction. Now, it's a Winchester. It's a new gun. Maybe it's not a reproduction. It's made by Winchester. But, of course, they're made now in uh, Japan, uh, Morocco. They do a great job, but they're... You're made overseas. Uh, this is made by Henry Rifle Company. It's a reproduction of the Henry. Okay, it's a new gun. You know, both these are new firearms. This is an original. Uh, like I said, sometime in the 1880s, 1879, the uh, uh, rolling block. Okay, 4570. It's an original. Uh, you know, model 97. Okay, and uh, this is. Oh yeah, I forget when that was made. Now I have to look at my own videos. But you know, it's a, it's it's a 97. Whatever. 20s, 30s, I forget, and then the uh, the A5 Auto 5. That's uh, that's made in the 70s, I think, if I remember right. This was made in the early, you know, like 40s or something. I think this uh, Ithaca double barrel. So it's a, it's not made in the 1800s, but it's an original gun. And I have to look at my video on that, get the exact dates on these. But the original, the main point, original trap door, and then the original uh, Crag rifle. Okay, just a little information on those, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is helpful or not, but we since we have these guns, I have so many of them, uh, I thought I'd just get them out and give you a quick overview of them. And I don't know if that helps or not, or it uh, it makes you want to shoot one or, or not want to shoot one. <laughs> but they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and again, one of the main points I want to make and the reason for doing this is uh, to encourage you folks that are getting a little bit of fever for these these types of firearms, these are kind of like the, the classic rock of firearms, you know. Uh, hey, they are fun and they are really cool. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and a lot of young people have discovered that, not just old guys like me, okay? And again, uh, my message to the, the folks who are not necessarily just old guys, you know, that, that get upset when people refer to games. If anybody's gonna get upset about that, you would think it'd be me. You know, who's older than I am, okay? Uh, but hey, it doesn't matter what somebody writes in the comments if they're civil, you know? Uh, so try to take it easy on people who like to play game, whatever the games are, I guess. Uh, try to take it easy on them. Folks uh, in my age bracket, younger, wherever you are, you can be a FUD at any age, right? Uh, these games are bringing a lot of people into the firearms world. Keep that in mind. Even if you'd like to say something, even if it does bother you, even if you hate video games, you know, uh, try to bite your tongue, man. We want these people that are coming to us from any uh, entertainment venue to develop uh, an interest in firearms. I mean, look at it from a selfish standpoint, if nothing else. So uh, I guess I do that to some extent, but man, these things are so cool. I enjoy sharing them and I wish everybody uh, could appreciate them. And again, I'm excited about this game, even though I probably will spend a lot of time playing it. I'm excited because it's bringing, as I've said before, uh, so many people apparently uh, to these firearms, okay? And uh, some of the folks are obviously playing the game are too young to, to buy them or maybe even go shoot them, but they will down the road and many of them are already, okay? So try to keep that in mind. Don't be a FUD. Uh, you know, games aren't necessarily my cup of tea either. Uh, but then again, when you look at it, you know, maybe games are my cup of tea. Maybe I've been playing games my whole life. I've been playing uh, basketball a lot. I played uh, all kinds of throwing darts. I love throwing darts. I uh, have been shooting all my life, shooting at targets that are fun. That's kind of a game. I've played the USPSA game, the GSSF game, competition, shooting, the, uh, what else, HMSA, long range silhouette game. Uh, I've played the, uh, IDPA game, you know, that's competition shooting. I've played the uh, SAS, S-A-S-S, Cowboy Action Shooting Game for 10 years. So I guess I am a game player. You know, we're all game players to some extent. And again, if you've ever made a comment on a Dirty Harry on a Model 29 video, uh, Make My Day or something, what's the difference between you or me and the folks that, that make a reference to a game? The difference is we don't know anything about that game, okay? But they do, and so let's be easy on them, okay? So anyway, uh, if that's how you got here, you got to our videos or anybody else's videos, you're welcome as far as I'm concerned. 
and I am happy that you're uh, showing interest in, in these firearms. All right? But anyway, they're great. They're a lot of fun. Life is good. Oh, I didn't see that. I was just playing my favorite country and western song. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become uh, get an associate's degree in firearms technology or become certified in uh, gunsmithing. So if you're interested in a career like that, please go check them out, sdi.edu. Also, while you're on the internet, please go to hickok45.com and see everything we have over there. Um, we have all of our social media links and all that kind of thing, like, like uh, full30.com, um, links to our store. We have t-shirts now that you can, you can acquire for yourself with your bunker branding. Uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch's new company. Um, it's Hickok45 on Twitter, just to save you the time from going to the website. Um, Hickok45 on Facebook, uh, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. Um, there's a John Hickok YouTube channel. There's a John underscore Hickok45 Instagram where I post some stuff. So please go check that out. And then I'm going to get back to uh, playing this country song. <laughs>